Hello everybody, this is Chris Butler with Rusty Barn. We are so excited to announce that we are going back to live shows. Um, upcoming May 20th through the 22nd, we will be live in Boise, Idaho at Expo Idaho, which is the fairgrounds. And then following that, look at my calendar, June 17th through 19th, we will be in Oklahoma City. And that is at the Oklahoma City Fairgrounds in Oklahoma. Anyway, we are so excited to be coming back live to you. In the meantime, please keep supporting Wild Wednesday Live. We appreciate you, and we will see you in the mall. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Wild Wednesday Live. I'm your host, Raylene Salazar. Um, before we get started, as always, we just want to go through a few things. But first, I want to say one more thing that I don't normally add to my opening spiel here, but um, I want to recognize somebody who's really been keeping the wheels on this machine rolling since we started this several months ago. Um, and that's our webmaster, Ruth Roth. She is doing all the mall stuff. She gets all the vendors set up. She does all the specials. She does all the Wild Wednesday stuff and keeps every one of us in line. And without her, this would not be happening, I guarantee you. And it's a very thankless job. So I would love it if all of you guys could just take a second and type in thanks, Ruth, so she knows how much we appreciate that she's keeping Wild Wednesdays going for us. Now, also, don't forget that all of today's vendors are offering a special discount, and that will be good till tomorrow night at midnight, and we'll, each one of them will tell you what their special code is or what you need to do to order. But to always find our four vendors fast and easy, you're just going to go to the Quilt Craft Sew Mall, find the Wild Wednesday logo, and click on the link, and that will take you to today's vendors so that you don't have to go searching through the whole mall. Now, as a reminder, we are going to have a question and answer session at the end of the show. So any questions you have for any of the vendors, just hold on to those till the end of the show and we'll take care of it then. And don't forget, if you ever miss a live show, then just go to our YouTube channel, Quilt Craft Sew Mall. All of our past episodes are there. And while you're there, be sure and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And we're continuing on with the reason you guys are all here anyway, for the free prizes, right? <laughs> we know you love the gifts. You told me that last time I mentioned, does anybody like uh, raffle prizes? So um, today we've got five terrific prizes. We've got a $25 gift certificate from Essential Body Wear, a $25 gift certificate from Quilted Treasures. We have a Try Me kit from Chalk Couture. We have a banner kit from the Fabric Chicks Creative Oasis and a Notions grab bag from Culture's Haven. So later in the show, we'll be giving you that secret phrase. And when you hear that phrase, you'll simply type it in the comments and that's all you have to do to enter. And as a reminder, our show does stream live over the internet. So on occasion, we may have issues with our connections. Some of our vendors are kind of out in remote areas and we just ask that you bear with us because if you've watched the news lately, so much of that is coming remote. You know occasionally that there's sound issues or video issues or there's also this horrible lag time that we have to get used to. But if we ever have a vendor that we feel like the interruption is so bad that you're not getting thing out of their presentation, we will just stop and ask them to log back on. And if that doesn't fix it, we'll just move on and we'll bring them back at another time. So I think that's everything so that we can get going today. So first up, we actually have a new vendor with us. She's not new to the shows and new to the mall, but she's a first time appearance on Wild Wednesday. But this particular vendor, this is kind of a girl's vendor. Um, so if any of you guys that view with us, if you want to just, you know, go get a snack for a few minutes and then come back in a little bit, we will totally understand. So what we're going to do right now is welcome Casey from Essential Body Wear, because, you know, guys, we always talk about being comfortable and we're talking about your chair and your cutting table height, but you know, what about the clothes you're wearing? So Casey's going to take it from here now. Hi, Casey. Hey, Raylene. How are you? We're doing good and we're anxious to have you show us what you've got. So go okay. ahead. Okay. Thank you. So like Raylene mentioned, we are a women centric product. So if you're a gentleman, feel free to stay here and listen. Maybe you have a woman in your life that you can share some of this with. Um, or feel free to go get a coffee or a snack because I am here to talk about bras. So we're not going to sugarcoat it. We sell bras, we sell shapewear, and we sell, um, you know, fitwear. So some outerwear too. But the main bread and butter for essential body wear is bras, which is why I have a measuring tape around my neck. 
Um, I've met so many of you ladies, vendors, shoppers, sewers, quilters at um, so many of the shows last year. And I'm so excited to be back in Phoenix in September and in Idaho. So um, I'm just so glad that we finally get to be back to a little bit of normalcy and I get to be directly in front of some of you guys again. So we're a pretty personalized product, as you guys know. It's, it's very good to be in front of someone if you are fitting them for a bra. Um, this is our main seller. It's our Abby bra. So if you've stopped in my booth, you have seen the Abby bra most likely. 85% um, of everything we sell is our Abby. Uh, it comes in 56 different sizes from an A cup up to an I cup. So I'm going to show you guys a little um, peek of what we have going on right now. It's Wild Wednesday, so I have my leopard print on. But Essential Bodywear just came out with their new leopard print bra. So this is the Abby and Leopard. So it kind of goes with our Wild Wednesday theme, at least I think so. Um, super pretty. It comes in two different bra styles. And it also comes in a really pretty fanny. So these are some of the things that might be new since the last time. Oops, I have it turned around the wrong way. Since the last time I saw some of you ladies at some of the shows, um, our Abby bra. We also have our back smoothing version of our Abby bra. Comes up a little bit higher in the back. Comes in a couple different fun colors. Um, also have our Jesse Sports bra, which a lot, a lot of you ladies love. Um, and it's a moisture wicking bra. And it can go in an X or straight up and down. And this has been one of our best sellers, as you guys can probably imagine. During um, COVID, a lot of people have been holed up at home and our sports bra sales have just gone through the roof. And especially now that people are getting back into the gym. So we have a great sports bra line collection and several that will be expanded in another month or so, which is super exciting. So that's kind of our core collection. But I know a lot of people are thinking like, okay, that's great that you're showing me all these bras, but how on earth would I possibly know my perfect size when I'm not in your booth? Um, so we've come up with a whole virtual system a lot of companies have for how you can fit yourself for the perfect fitting bra. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in four quick steps if you were interested in getting a bra. And I have some other awesome products to show you in a minute. But everybody's top question is, how do I know my right size? How do I get into one of your products? So I'm going to show you that. So if you guys have one of these and you guys are sewers and quilters, I know all of you guys have a seamstress measuring tape. If not, I'm sure you have a string and a manual measuring tape. So you could do it that way. Um, but you take your seamstress measuring tape and you're going to take four different measurements that you're going to message to me. And when I'm done, I'm going to put how you can connect with me and my customer VIP group and get in touch with me if you're interested in getting your measurements assessed by me and getting a bra. But hopefully you guys can see me all right, but you're gonna take four quick measurements. You're gonna take one right underneath where your bras would end or your bust line. Um, you're gonna pull it pretty tight. You're gonna give me that measurement. That's gonna be your band measurement. So that's gonna be your size around. You're gonna do three different, oops, three different measurements for your cut measurement. Your next measurement is gonna go around the largest part of your bust. You're going to measure that. You're not going to pull it super tight. And you're going to send me that measurement. That's going to be your second measurement. The third measurement you're going to give me, you're going to start from underneath your arm, right where the seam of your shirt is, or right in your armpit. You're going to come around to the middle and where the middle of your breast is or um, the center, you will give me that measurement. And the last one, you flip it over your shoulder come underneath and you're going to go this way to and you're going to push it to where it stops being fleshy it's kind of funny to look at this in reverse and see if you're doing it right and then you're going to point to the middle and give me that measurement so four quick measurements you can message me that um, my um, name if you're looking for me on facebook is the bust stop by casey so you can find me that way or you can go to the website and get in touch with me there so that is how to measure yourself for a bra. Let me show you some of our other products. And then I'm going to talk about just a couple things for how you would know if it's time for you to get measured for a bra. So these are some of our popular products we usually sell to the ladies at the sewing and clothing shows. Um, our poppy bra. 
which is our non-underwire back smoothing bra, triple lined. This is super popular with some of the ladies that just, I know it looks a little sad because it's not on somebody's body, but it is a great supportive um, non-underwire bra, which a lot of ladies are looking for. Also have another non-underwire bra, which is new for some of our smaller busted ladies. Love the happy. So really nice to wear around the house when you're not looking for a wire. Um, also have a new item that was added to our line. Um, this is one of our other bras before I show you that. Triple lined. It's coming out in a brand new color in just a couple of months. This comes up to an eye cup, triple lined, back smoothing. This is called the Emma bra. A lot of the ladies that come to the show love this bra. And then the last one, which is new, it's our push-up bra. Um, it's called the Piper. It comes in three different colors, a really pretty purple, a black with lace on the back as well, and then this buff color. So those are our main sellers in addition to our Abbey's. Um, we also have our Penelope Bamboo Pajamas, which are a three-piece set. These are literally heavenly. Um, pockets, they are tight at the ankles so that they don't ride up at night. I can't even wear my regular pajamas anymore because they come up to my knees when I sleep. So I've been a little bit spoiled. Also comes with a pair of shorts with this cute little frill at the bottom and the top with somehow has escaped me. And then the last thing I'm going to show you, just a rainbow of colors for all of our buttery smooth fit leggings or essential leggings. These came out in November and um, add any one of these onto your order for $40. And the ladies are loving these. They have a pocket on the side, buttery smooth, super high quality legging. So those are just a quick and dirty products that I want to show you. But a lot of people will say, well, Casey, you know, how do I know if it is time for me to get a new bra? So let's talk about when you would then. So first of all, typically, if it's been a year or more, it's probably time for you to get a new bra. Um, the bras are usually made of elastic or latex, usually some type of stretchy material, because that's what kind of holds you in and together and makes you look 10 pounds thinner, which is our company motto. So those types of materials wear out over time more quickly than some of the other materials. So usually after a year, it's time to replace your bras. If you don't think it's time yet after a year, let's do a couple of different tests. If you lift up your arms and your band is moving at all up with your arms, it is time for you to get a new bra. If someone or you can actually reach around and pull out more than two fingers from your body to your band, it is time for you to get a new bra because that elastic is stretched out. You're not getting the same support as you normally would. Um, so you want to go ahead and look into replacing it. If you put your arms down and your arms are closer to your elbows than your shoulders, that bra is probably worn out. It's probably time for you to call me or call your <laughs> essential body wear rep. Um, also, if you have... A, an ill-fitting bra, it's probably time for you to get a refit or even just be remeasured. So if you have spillage over the side of your cup, so if you turn towards the side, you can see here, 100% seamless, because I have the t-shirt brought on. If you have any bulge out of the bra, it's probably time for you to be refit or you're in the wrong size bra. If you lean over, if you look in, you have a huge gap with your cup, it's probably time for you to get a bra or get a sizing um, or refit. So those are kind of the, the main things for you to look at, um, to reach out. If you have, one more thing I just thought of, if you have gained or lost a significant amount of weight, and no, we have not all gained a ton of weight during um, COVID. I've had so many customers that have lost so much weight. So if you've lost more than 25 pounds, it's time for you to get refit because those bras are probably not gonna fit. So that's awesome. Um, so reach out for a refit if it's time. And then, you know, just make sure if you are buying our products, you care for them correctly. So don't put them in the dryer if you're investing in new products. Um, I'm sure you don't put some of your quilts in the dryer if you spent hours and hours making them. Um, wash them on hand wash in an intimate bag on the delicate cycle and take super, super good care of them. And you probably won't need to be calling me after a year. So that is everything I have for you guys today. Um, 
Super excited to see you guys in September. Hopefully we'll have our wild print still there. Um, I am going to post in the comments what my customer group is so you guys can join. And I also want to let you guys know that our special for today is if you order two or more bras, it's $15 off of both of your bras. So that's awesome. So it's a $30 savings and any pair of fit leggings that you add on is just $40. Those are our specials, and I'm I'm so looking forward to seeing you guys in Phoenix and in Idaho, and I may even make a sneak appearance in California if there's still room. So nice talking to you guys today, and I can't wait to see who the winner of my gift card is. You guys have a great week. Thank you so much, Casey. That was awesome. I mean, guys, come on. Have you ever had anybody make bras so fun? <laughs> she does such a great job. So um, again, she's got that great special good through tomorrow night at midnight. So do not wait. And remember in our drawer prize drawings, she has donated a $25 gift certificate. Could you imagine? You could do some great damage with that towards your order. So now Casey, I know you had mentioned you had to leave. Are you going to be able to be back on with this for the Q&A? So I am going to hop off of my computer and I'm going to get on my phone and come back. Awesome. So awesome. We'll see you then. Thanks, Thanks so much. All righty. So we are ready to move on, but we had a little bit of a technical problem with our next vendor. She was on and backstage and ready, and then she dropped off. And I know she's trying to get signed back on, but I think that Adele is probably ready and she's usually uh, standing by. So Adele, are you there? I'm here. I'm ready. Let's go. Awesome. So, you know, Adele has been on a few times and we always have such a great response to her appearance. And uh, she and I were talking and she's going to do another presentation, but she's going to focus on how you can incorporate her wonderful products with your quilting. Because as she's mentioned in her previous perform uh, previous appearances, she is also a quilter. That's her, that's her passion. So I'm going to turn it over to her now. And hopefully by the time she's done, we will have uh, Bob be back on so go for it Adele show us awesome awesome let's go let's go so uh, the first couple of things I want to mention is I started a brand new group today on Facebook I had a group there that wasn't very great so I decided to get rid of it so there's a new group I just started like a couple of minutes ago and it's called Adele's crafting and quilting group you can search for it on Facebook or Chris will drop it in the comments uh, we're just going to share inspiration in there, specials, bundles. Um, it, it's a way for me to give discounts. I can't really do that with the website, the way things are set up. So it's just a way to have some fun. So make sure you type in group and I will get you added to that group. Um, but first I want to show you a couple things I've made prior and talk a little bit about Chalk Tour because a lot, of, a lot of times I just get going and I don't tell you what Chalk Tour is. Well, here is a... Uh, silk screen transfer. This is what our whole business is based on. And basically the paste or the ink goes through the silk screen and stays on the design. When you're using chalk, it dries hard. And um, that is permanent until you're ready to take it off. So I can touch this and it's not going to come off till I squirt it with water and scrape it off. We also have an ink product the ink can go on fabric. It can also go on cups. I don't do mornings. I mean, we've got lots of, lots of little different things you can put on the cups. Um, and then I just want to show you a pillow that I did a while back. I don't think I did it on this show. Um, but it's a, a birdhouse. It's got a couple of layers there. And I don't know if you could see the gray, but it doesn't show up very well on there. But Anyway, you can do that with ink, and then all you have to do is heat set that with parchment paper and an iron, and then it's permanent. So I am working on a wall hanging, but before we get started, I want to show you the whole process. So I'm going to tilt the camera down, and we'll get started. Okay, so this is our uh, ink mat. It is sticky, and that holds the fabric in place and also protects... Like if I was doing a t-shirt, it would protect the back of the t-shirt. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my fabric. Now this is just going to be a wall hanging. I'm, I think, you know, quilting, you change your mind a lot of times, sometimes in the middle of the project, um, about how it's going to go. And so let me just make sure I've got enough. I kind of creased it in the middle on purpose. I wanted a general middle 
Let me just feel there. Oh, I want to pull it up a little bit farther. So let me just get it on there. I probably should have creased the edges too so I could know where a better middle is. There we go. Okay, I think I'm good. I can always trim it up, as you know. I'm kind of thinking a piano keyboarder and doing this as a um, as a wall hanging, but it may turn into a quilt. You never know. You never know. I want something that I can put in my booth when we get started shortly. And um, I also want something that I could put maybe in my sunroom because I live in an area that has a lot of sun and you can spend a lot of time in the sunroom. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and again, this is a sticky, sticky on one side, not sticky on the other. And I'm just going to sort of center this here. Now it's real important when you're inking to get the uh, transfer down real good because you don't want anything to shift on you when you're inking. All right, looks like you guys can see that pretty well. So another um, service that we have is called Club Couture. Uh, that is our subscription service. If you're interested in that, just try, drop club in the comments. It's kind of like a block of the month. And um, they just send a eight and a half by 11 transfer uh, to your house with uh, three coordinated paste packets. And they're, it's, it's a way to get started without a huge investment. Then we, if you are interested in that, just try type club in the comments. Sorry, I'm fumbling all over my words today. So typical. Uh, we also have a try me kit, which is what the winner of today's uh, thing will get from me. And the try me kit is a small surface transfers and the packets and the squeegee. So you have everything to get started. Um, so if you're interested in that type, try me in the comments. Also, if you're interested in becoming a designer, we have a starter kit and this month, April is amazing. For some reason, the company decided to go crazy and do like a Willy Wonka thing, which is really exciting. Five designers are going to get the golden ticket in their starter kit this month. And uh, it's random, so you don't know who it is. Along with that, th those five designers with that golden ticket will get $100 worth of free product, which is awesome. Along with that, <laughs> I mean, they really kicked it up in April. I don't know what's going on, but they really kicked it up in April. Uh, they are adding a free transfer to each kit. So each kit will get a random free transfer if you order the starter kit. Along with that, <laughs> they are offering, if you create something using that free transfer and you post it on the designer studio with appropriate hashtags, whatever they, and they'll send that to that information to you. If you do all that, you have another chance to win a hundred dollars in free product. I wish I, sometimes I wish I wasn't a designer so I could take advantage of all these deals. But um, I am super looking forward to uh, getting back to live shows. I will be in Boise and uh, just looking forward to so much, uh, not only reconnecting with the vendors, but also with customers. I have a lot of customers that actually follow me to shows. It's kind of interesting and I love it. And I get to see them at different shows across the country. And they always come and say, oh, we were looking for your booth. So I'm excited for that. And excited, of course, to see Chris and Eric. And I'm just going through, I'm pushing this through the screen, just making sure using our squeegee just making sure it gets all the way through. And I don't want to work it too much because it may come, you know, it may work down through there if, it, if there's not a good seal. So I'm just pushing it through the screen. When I go to take this off, I will, um, one of the biggest things is make sure your hands are clean and then make sure that it's gone through equally everywhere. 
unless you want the weathered look. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of check it out, see how we're doing. And I'm going to start here, I think. I don't have anything on my hands, which is shocking. Okay, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Usually I have to do some touch-up work, but so far this fabric has taken the ink really well. Now, if you're working with a really porous fabric, like the jean jackets I did a couple weeks ago. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Oh my gosh, I love this. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna do something that I haven't ever done on the show before either. I'm going to actually clean my screen on camera, the silk screen that I just used so you can kind of see the process. So I'm gonna set this aside, but oh my gosh, look at that, I love it. Oh, now I'm really excited. I can't wait to work on this. The one thing I do love about chalking versus quilting is that instant gratification <laughs> because you see how long that took me, literally a couple of minutes. So I'm just going to lay the silk screen on here and actually I'm going to start with water on a paper towel first. And I'm just gonna, because this is all water soluble. Once you heat set, once I heat set that on the fabric, that, that is a, I think it's a, oh shoot, I'll have to think of the name, the solid, Kona solid, that's a Kona solid um, fabric. Um, but once you put it on the fabric, you have to heat set it. And once you do that, it actually takes on the feel of fabric. And I know there's a technical word that somebody out there knows, but I I'm sure I have heard it, but don't remember it. Okay, so I've got some of the basics off here. I'm gonna just squirt it with a little bit more water. And as you can see, it's coming up and I'm just gonna keep doing this. Next, I'm gonna move on to a Clorox wipe and then I'm going to go to our board eraser. And I've never done this on, on camera before with any of our transfers. But I thought, you know, I need to show that because it's an important part of the process because this is now reusable. I can use this over and over again. At shows, we use our little demo when we're doing our demos. Sometimes we'll use those the whole show. But honestly, at the Quilt Craft and Sew shows, we are so busy that we have to change them out like by a day and a half, they're usually kind of, we've done so many demos that we have to do something to change about. Okay, let me go back to a paper towel real quick. Try to get some of the moisture off here. Okay, now I'm gonna just do this real quick. Get this off. And then I'm gonna come back with our board eraser. I think I covered it up with the and our board eraser just, uh, it's just another level of cleaning. Um, cleaning this silk screen off. And we don't care about the staining. So with black and reds, you will get a lot of staining due to the pigment. Um, but as long as that screen area where the words are, are clean, you can use this transfer over and over again. I've probably already used this transfer probably five times, maybe 10. It's one of my favorites, especially with the, uh, you know, with the whole stay home stuff. Sitting on the porch is kind of a cool thing, you know, especially if you're living by yourself or something like that. It's good to sit on the porch and, and um, meet people. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and stop. Now, the rest of this would be I would um, wipe it off just a little bit more, and then I would turn it over, let it air dry on the back, and once it's air dried, I would then put it back on the backer sheet, and then it would be ready to go again. Now, it's really important to make sure you label these, which I have not done, apparently. Um, you always want to write on the back of it. I've gotten so used to looking for the shiny. Because if you put it on the dull side, you will ruin your transfer. It, it sticks to paper pretty well. 
I've actually saved a couple, that, but for the most part, you will probably ruin your transfer. So, okay, I think that's it for me. We also have a Pinterest-like group. So if you want to type in um, chalk in the comments, I will get you a link to that group, and you can join our the chalk room. It's called the chalk room. Just make sure you put Wild Wednesdays in the comments when they ask who referred you, and we'll get you into that room where you can see a bunch of different designers creating amazing things from Chalk Couture. That was so awesome, Adele. I was just as excited as you when you pulled that uh, screen <laughs> off. That thing came out so good. I know now that's one of the ones I need. Yeah. And you know what? If Eric is listening, Eric, I'm begging you, do not put our booths close to each other. I won't have any money left. Because after seeing you all these different times you've been on, I've gotten even more excited about your product than I already was. So this yeah. could be very, very dangerous for me. <laughs> but, well, and also, Eric. She needs some yeah, self-defense. <laughs> there you go. Hey, and guys, be sure um, you do check out those Facebook groups that she has because it is so much fun every day seeing all the different ideas that people are posting. I've really been having a lot of fun with it. So thank you so much, Adele. We will see you at the end of the show. And thanks yep. for jumping in and uh, going on yep. a little bit early for us. No problem at all. Okay, so before we move on, I do want to mention that we do have our vendor back who we had a little connection problem. She's re reconnected and waiting for you. But before we go to her, I know you guys are probably ready, you regulars especially, you know that we do our contest between the second and third vendor. So as a reminder, in just a moment, I am going to give you the secret word for today. To enter the door prize drawings, you will simply type that word in, but please only one time. Everybody just one time. Then later today, usually about an hour after the show ends, I will do a post on the Quilt Craft Sewing Festival Facebook page, and that will say who won. And then you will simply need to email me your address. And those instructions will be in that Facebook post. So please, if you have no desire to win any of these wonderful prizes, just don't enter. <laughs> we really have a hard time every week. We laugh about it, but I have never worked so hard in my life to give things away. Um, so please make sure you check back and uh, see if you're a winner. So, all right, everybody ready? Today's word is enter. How easy is that? Just simply type in enter and we will get you in the drawing. All right, so now we are ready to go back to Bobby from Quilted Treasures. Um, hi, Bobby, are you there? I'm here. Yeah, who knows what happened, you know, technology, but the important thing is you're here with us now because we're very excited to have you back and see what you're gonna talk about today. So go ahead and take it away. Okay, well, we're going to talk about Sukineko inks. And what I like about them is that they are non-toxic, acid-free, and archivable. Once you heat set them, they're permanent. And they don't add any hand to your fabric, so you can't even tell they're there. So I'm going to switch over now and show you the things that I use. And we should switch. There we go. Okay, the inks come in 45 different colors. I think it's 46 now because this is the newest one, which is um, ro Golden Rose. And that is a opaque one. The others are translucent. So on the translucent ones, you don't have to shake them up because there's no pigments in them. When you have the opaque ones, which are your black and white, as well as your metallics, there's a metal ball in it. No, nope, if you can hear that. And that's what shakes it up. If you make a mistake and you shake it up like this, what happens is all the ink gets into the cap, and when you put the cap back on, it dribbles down the side. One of my very favorites is the white opaque, and I've nicknamed this Quilter's Whiteout. Because if you make a mistake, I use this type of brush, let me get it against something you can see. See how it's stiff and it comes flat across the top? I dry brush it onto my piece and let it dry. And within two coats, I can even color black. You can also use it to daub it on, but it's a great way to get out colors that were cut in by mistake. I'm gonna take a minute and show you some of the tools that we use. 
I use toothpicks. I use this for taking the ink out of my bottles and putting it on my shaving cream when I'm marbling it or just transferring it. We use these daubers. This one here is just a little dauber that fits on, whoops, I gotta figure out which way to go, fits on your finger and you can daub it. You just spray water on these and you can clean them up. So that's a small dauber. This one is the round dauber. And then we have the sweep. So all of these are easy when we're applying our paint our ink to something like a silk screen. We also use the Fantastics. Now they come in two different forms. One of them is called a point, it's called a Fantastic, see how the point there? Now you never want to dip it in past this blue line here where the hard part is. And what it does is it wicks up inside. Then you can use this like you would any pen. They also come rounded like this. They call them bullets, I call them blenders. I have one for my reds, one for my yellows, one for my blues. So when my ink is still wet, I can use it to blend the colors and make it shade nicely. Also, if I dip this into aloe vera, I can take and reconstitute the ink before I heat set it, and I can move it around and blend things in. Another tool that I use is the coffee stirrer. Now, those of you in California can't get this anymore, so I do have them. If you need them, just contact me. But we put this into the ink. You put your finger on the end, and then you take it out, and you count the drops. So if you're making material, and you, you run out of a quilt that you're making material for, and you need some more, most of the time we don't care about the print. We care about the color. So when you're doing this, you want to take and count the drops as you take them out and then you put it in a notebook and then you can put a color swatch afterwards and you can make that color again anytime you want. We also have these pocket guides and they are great for those of us that aren't artists. It shows you how to mix all the different colors up and there's a place on the back for you to play with. So those are handy. We have those available as well. Um, when we're using shaving cream to do modeling on shaving cream. This is the workstation. And what, the reason I do this is because it's a smooth surface. There's no pores to it. Unlike a, a quilting mat, you know how there'll be pores lines or even on a counter. So I take and put my shaving cream on that. I'm probably not gonna have time to show you demoing it, but I'll show you how I do this. I take my shaving cream and I hold it up straight with my board straight and I squirt it on like this. Then I take and smooth it out with a popsicle stick. Now, shaving cream, I say, has a personality. We want the cheap stuff. You don't want anything that's expensive. Try to get something with little or no perfume in it so that it doesn't overwhelm you. But when you're first starting using a can of shaving cream, it's very dry at the top. So sometimes when you're doing modeling on shaving cream, you can lay your fabric down, lightly touch the back of it, and it will transfer the image, and you'll be able to do multiple images. Each one will be a little bit lighter than the last one. That's only when you first start with a can. After you've been using it for a while, it's got more liquid in it. So when you peel it off, it's going to be all smudgy. So when we do that, we have a squeegee that we use. I'm sorry that it's coming out backwards to you here, but <laughs> um, the squeegee has different sides. There's the rubber side at the bottom here. There's a smooth side at this end here. Another smooth side here if you're getting into a small spot. And then this is basically done more for, um, face, for uh, scrapbooking. I like to take and dip this in when I have marble fabric and I can make little lines through it and create designs or create a plaid with it. Now, if you don't have something like that, go to the hardware store and you can get something like this and you can just squeegee it off. Now, when you squeegee it off, you're gonna take and put that onto a paper towel and scrape it off like this and then go back and take it off. Once all the shaving cream is off your piece, 
You can put your hand right down on it and it's dry. It's not going to come out. It'll feel wet, but the moisture is from the shaving cream only. Now, what I like to do is start out by marbling with my shaving cream. So I have all these beautiful colors that are all uh, marbled through there. And then when I do anything with my stencils or my uh, silk screens, I instead of mixing it up to make one color, I can use one of my daubers and I can make it so that it's multicolored. Now, the things that I use for daubers, makeup sponges, besides the ones that you can get. So foam paint brushes, you can use those. This is my popsicle stick. Where did I get it over here? I do like a dove bar stick, but I got they all got lost in the fire, so I don't have any more of those, and I'm diabetic, so I can't eat them. <laughs> but they're nice because they have a little shape to them. Now, pipettes are good. The ones that I carry are the longer ones. The reason I like the longer ones better is because I can take and just bring a little bit up into the tube. I don't have to bring it up all the way to the ball. In the little ones, it goes up very quickly to the ball. It just takes longer to clean them out or you have to dedicate them to a certain color. So I'm a quilter, I'm frugal. I like to be able to rinse them out and use them again. And all I do is just use an empty bottle of water and you can dip them in, squeeze them back and forth and it'll wash them out. Everything cleans up with soap and water. Now, one thing I always like to let everybody know about up front is how to take it out if you make a mistake. And are you familiar with the Tide to Go pen? This pen is great. You take the cap off, and there's a little thing you push down on. Now, when you apply this, when you push down, it releases soap from here. So be careful when you go to rub it to, to get the color out. What I like to do is after I've used one up and it's empty, I save it. So when I do it, I put this onto the fabric and then I take it, put the cap back on and use the old one to rub it so I'm not re keep unloading the soap. You don't have to worry about the soap. It's not going to hurt anything. And the other thing that I use, but it's only for certain fabrics, is the Clorox pens. And they have a little brush at one end that you can use or it comes out of the liquid. Be very careful when you're having it come out of the liquid because it gets all over the place. Sometimes you may want to put it onto a brush. Some of the other tools that we have, these are called doodle sticks. And they're smaller versions of these. Now, these come in a small and a large, and it's got a tip on here that you can dip in and use to smooth things over. Just have fun with them. I don't have time in this to show you how we use them, but they come with a chisel tip, they come with a round, or they come with a pointed tip. These are smaller versions of the same thing, and they're called doodle sticks. Sometimes just the size of the tool you're using makes a big difference. Now, we also have the Fabrico pens. It's the same ink that's in the liquid. Now, these pens have a brush tip at one end and a fine tip at the other. Get it over here. Oops, there we go. Now, when you're using these, make sure you put the cover back on and store them horizontally in a cool, dark place and they won't dry out. You'll actually use them pens until they're empty. There's 35 different colors in the pens. These do not bleed. I have never used them in anything that they bleed. There's something about the way it's applied. The liquid can bleed, so we have different ways of controlling it. There's also on my website, you'll find specials where you can get a full set of the pens or the liquids, and you don't have to worry about them drying out because as long as they're stored properly, they won't dry out. Now, I prepared a little sample here because I didn't think we'd have time to do everything. Oops, let's go back to... Okay, I like to use something like this little tray here. And what I did is on one side, I used shaving cream. And I mixed my color in with it. And on the other side, I used aloe vera. Now, you can see how this shaving cream has gotten very dry here. So when it gets dry like that, make sure I get it right in the camera for you there, we can just take aloe and mix it together and it will reconstitute the shaving cream. If the shaving cream is very dry, 
you're going to have a hard time applying it. But see how that dry shaving cream now has become moist again? Just be careful. The more aloe vera or the more shaving cream you add, the lighter it's going to get. So you need to add the ink accordingly. So the samples that I've done over here for you is this part here was done with the shaving cream. This one happens to be gold. This was the purple and this is the green. Now the ones next to it, I did with the aloe vera. You see how in the green one, it did kind of bleed out a little bit. So if we want to do something, we're coloring in something, if you take a white Crayola crayon and you put, put, cover your whole design, so like on this B here, I would go over the entire thing with the white Crayola crayon and then put a dry iron on it. What that's going to do is it blocks the pores of the fabric. So when I'm putting my ink on, it slows down the bleeding process. The thing that will stop it with the ink the most is shaving cream because it makes it very dry. Now on these samples here, I don't know if you can see as well, but this is the gold that I use with the shaving cream. And it's see, you can see how it comes up and it glitters like gold. The metallics will do that even mixed with the shaving cream. These were stencils that I used. And be very careful that you don't oversaturate them. And I simply used one of my makeup sponges to do that. And when I do the, the silk screens or the stencils, I put a piece of masking tape down so I can lift them up, check and make sure I've got accurate coverage over, over the entire piece. And if not, I can lay them back down. You will never get them to line up again if you don't do tape it down like that. Now to give you an idea why we do that is this was my little gold bu bubble bee. And when I picked it up, I hadn't covered it, although it looked like it had been all covered. However, on this one here, I kept peeling it back and doing it. Now, when you're using a silk screen, you will find that there is a shiny side and then there is a not shiny side. So what I do with my motto is keep the shiny side down. And I'm going to show you how I clean them up. I like to take a piece of paper towel and put it on the bottom. I'm going to take and spritz it. Come on. Spritz it with water. There we go. And then I like to take a sea sponge. Let me get this in the right place here. I'm not too good at lining things up. Okay, so you can see it's all wet. And you can hear how hot I can rub it. The important thing is to make sure that there's no ink that's left inside. See how nicely that cleaned up? Now I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to just rub it. Now this is on the non-shiny side. When I turn it over, I'm just going to blot the shiny side. Uh, these, st these silk screens, the real ones, are actually made out of exposed film. So if you take and get this wet and then you rub it, you can smudge it. There's only two things you can do to ruin these silk screens. One is not clean them up and the other one is to smudge the film onto other areas. So now this is ready to use. You can also throw them in the sink, and, but then you can't use them right away. So that's how I take care of silk screens and clean them up. Uh, let's see. Don't worry if I'm going too fast because I have the CD. It's called Being Creative with Sukineko Inks. And I've got this on special on my website. I forget now what the price was. I think it's $10. It's regularly $20. And you get this, and it shows you 20 different ways of using the inks and the pens and the liquid and how to get things out. All you see is my hands. I say hi at the beginning, bye at the end. You can also use things like salt. When I'm doing something like uh, faux shibori, I accordion pleat my fabric or I tie it up with little rocks or beads in it. And then I take and put the water into the ink and I use it like I would for a watercolor, and I put it on my fabric. You must let it set for about a half an hour. Then take it out, and afterwards you can sprinkle 
the salt, and it depends upon the size. You can use table salt, kosher salt, uh, rock salt, anything like that. And what happens is it will absorb the um, color and it will make it look different. Afterwards, you, about a half an hour when it's dry, you can just shake it off and everything is fine. Now, this is the aloe vera that I used. I like it in this pump bottle because it's easier to apply. You don't need much of it. I like the clear because if you use the one that's tinted, blue, green, or, or um, any other color, in something like the yellows or the whites, that color may distort the color you have. So just use a little of this. I can use it to put with my inks to make them into a liquid, or I can put it into shaving cream and make that a little bit more fluid, especially if it's drying out like it did today. Now I have some samples here. I'm just gonna ditch these. I love to work with tone on tone fabrics. Now on this one here, what I did is I dry brushed the back of this in multiple colors. Then I take and let it dry and it only colors in the background and not the raised tone on tone fabric. Now here I went in with the pens. Let's see if I can get that in the right place there. I went in with the pens and I outlined and colored some of them in. So if your design is big enough, you can take and add another element by coloring them in. With the way the cameras are, it's not good to show you just white tone on tone fabrics. So I've got some that's colored for you. And this one here, I did the same thing. I colored the back of it when I turned it over. All the white is still white. Now, when you do this, you want to do it on a, a smooth, dry surface. And when it's done, or if you peek, make sure you wipe off any of the ink that might be on your sm surface or else it will transfer onto here. But you can see how you can change things around. I was telling you about the faux shibori. This is a piece of that. And here, I added the salt. Can you see how it adds, makes it different? And down here, there was no salt. And you can actually use it from either side because it goes right through the fabric. We can take just printed fabric and see how nice it is when we can just color them in. So you can take a black and white fabric and you can make it any color that you want to. Then we have something like this where I used a stencil. So these are all samples. 15 minutes is not enough time to show you everything. So if you are interested in learning more about this, get the CD. And if anyone is interested, they can contact me and we'll set up a YouTube class where we can just play with this. Now these I started, see the stencil there? I traced the stencil out and then I colored them in and it looks like I'm an artist. Those are, Those are gorgeous. Those are all so gorgeous, Bobby. I'm sorry, we're gonna have to move on because you just have okay. so many awesome things to show, but we're, we're running kind of low, low on time. But uh, we definitely encourage everybody to get that, uh, that DVD and explore this because this stuff is just beautiful. Right, it gives artists a, a palette, a, so we a quilt is an artist palette, so we can color them in. And I do have another special on my website. Uh, it's twenty percent off of all non-sale items. Awesome! Thank you so very much, and we hope you'll stick around because we'll probably will have a few questions at the end. And just a reminder, guys, that in the today's door prize drawing, Bobby is giving away a $25 gift certificate. So great time to get started and get your supplies. Okay, well, before we get to our last vendor today, I just wanna remind you that if you have not put in this secret word today, you wanna make sure you do that now. This is your last reminder. The word is enter. And if you've already done it, you do not need to do that again. Enter. Okay, so uh, last but not least, my co-host Beth is with us today, and I'm excited to see what she's going to show us. So how you doing, Beth? I'm doing great. How about you? 
I'm awesome. I'm going to let you get right into it so we can move along. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm going to make it super quick. So if you girls have any questions, you can always email me or call me. Um, probably because I'm a quilt shop owner, not a techie person. I hate computers. Um, we probably do not have everything on our website. So if you go to our website and you're not finding what you're looking for, although all the banners and things should be on um, the left-hand side under kits. Um, but you should be able to... Um, to find everything there. But if you can't, if I'm showing you something you can't find, just give us a call. We're happy to help you. We're happy to take you on a, a FaceTime tour of the shop and be your personal shoppers. So today we're going to demo how to do banners. Banners are probably one of our most popular kits because they're quick and easy and they make great gifts. They make cute decorations. You can do them for holidays. You can do them for pretty much anything, but they are super quick. Um, you can embellish them. They're fun to do. Um, mostly they're just quick and we're all looking for a quick project in between our longer quilting projects. So behind me, and it was kind of hard because we actually have banners all over our store. Um, so I had my son taking them down and putting up them up around where we're going to demo. And he said that there was not enough room. So, um, so he did a few and then there's a few in weird places now and there's a few in their original places. So we might get a quick tour, I'm not sure. But so in one kit we have the Maker and the Bliss and um, I actually made a third banner out of that kit with Joy. So I just took the words, it's a panel with all the letters and I just took them and mushed the letters together till I found words that I liked. And then I um, use heavyweight Tim Tech. So I'm going to tell you, there's a couple of things that we've experimented with, um, with the banners. Um, I personally don't really like floppy banners. I like the banners to be stiff. So we have, and I'm going to just show you some examples maybe. Um, so here was a super cute banner that oops, it's all tangled up now. Um, here's a super cute banner. Uh, oh, on the wheel, no less. Okay. You know, it never goes how you plan it. Um, okay, so here is a banner that we did. It says, Happy Halloween. So these are kind of the letters that are in that first banner I just talked about that I did, Maker, Joy, uh, Bliss. So here's a second banner, and it says, Happy Halloween. But we used not such a stiff stabilizer. Um, okay, well, you get the, you get the idea. Anyways, you can see these are kind of floppy. So I decided I hate them being floppy. It actually does spell Happy Halloween if you get it out. Um, but, and then this one here too, the butterfly one, there, it's, a, it's a heavyweight interfacing, but not heavy like Peltex or Timtex. So now I only use the Peltex or Timtex in our banners. Um, so here's a fun one. Um, cause a lot of times you get these weird panels that you don't really know what to do with. So here is a panel with this fun stuff, but what are you going to make with it? So this center one, I actually made as a table topper and I did put the Peltex in it. So it's stiff, but it's a candle mat. So you could have used batting, but if I'm going to um, light my house on fire, probably if I put batting and it's soft and the you know, I always wait till it burns out and then the glass explodes. Um, so this just gives it a little bit uh, more durability. And then with the other um, pieces from that panel, we made a banner and we are the embellishment queens. So you can see we sewed a lot of embellishments on it. This one isn't necessarily reversible. You can see I used Halloween fabrics, but it's not so much reversible. So this one I would put up against a wall most of my banners I do make reversible so that when I hang them in my booth, you can see it from both sides. If I was gonna hang it in my house, I would make two banners because you're gonna put it against a wall, you're not really gonna see the back side. So that just gives you ideas of how you can embellish it. Um, and then I had one random one I just turned into a pot holder just so that you could um, have a different idea. If you didn't wanna make a banner with that panel, you could make a pot holder or placemats or whatnot. Um, so we have tons and tons of banners. Um, I'm just gonna show you really quick. This is what the um, heavyweight Peltex or Temtex looks like. I like the double-sided fusible. 
So it's um, got sticky stuff on both sides. It, you can do it with sticky without the sticky stuff. You just have to pin your fabric. So it's kind of like the same weight as the brim of your hat. So that's kind of how you're going to know if you have the right product, um, which I don't know if that's on our website, but it should be. Um, and then all my leftover pieces, I'm just going to show you real quick. All the leftover pieces, Eleanor Peace Bailey turned into little birds for us. So don't ever throw anything away. When you get these random pieces, save them for little projects. And look at, you can have so much fun embellishing cute little birds and giving those to your friends as little gifts. Um, and then we have, um, so here is my Peltex. I'm gonna cut out from my panel the different size patches that I'm going to use in my banner. So I'm gonna just lay it right on to here. They always are different sizes. Like here's a bigger, this one's much bigger than this one. So you kind of have to do it each one at a time. So I'm gonna find a second one that's gonna match it. And then I'm just gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm just gonna cut right around it. Then I'm going to bring it over to my ironing mat. And I love a wool mat because it um, reflects the heat back up. So it's kind of like it's ironing both sides at the same time. And because it's fusible, I can either use a pressing sheet or some people call it an applique sheet or you can have a Teflon sheet or a fiberglass sheet. I prefer the fiberglass sheets from Bonash because it allows more heat to go through. But I don't actually need this because I've got the bone ash iron shoe on. So this allows the steam to come through, but it also keeps my um, iron clean and it, um, it irons the heat reflective. I don't really know, but the heat reflectiveness in it allows more heat to iron. <laughs> so I'm just going to make sure that my fabrics are lined up. And you don't really have to move your iron. You just need to make sure that it's melting your fusible. And with this iron shoe on, you can walk away and go help a customer and come back and it's not going to be burned. So that is a super big plus for me because I typically use the Aliso so it goes up and down. So I never have to lift it up. So I get involved in conversations or whatnot. And this will make sure that it doesn't burn. So that's kind of a plus. Um, I'm going to, oh, look, I'm going to rip this off even though it's fused because I put the wrong side. So I'm going to turn it back over to the right side. See, you, I can multitask, but not very well. So I'm just going to steam that on. Okay, so it's fused. And then you can just hole punch it right now I'm really rough on things, so I am going to stitch around the edges. So I used a metallic thread just because it will give a little bit of glittery gleam when the light hits it. So I just used a glitter free motion stitch all the way around it just to secure the fabric so that when I'm packing and unpacking for shows, it doesn't start to peel off. Then I'm gonna take a hole punch. I have a singular hole punch. I'm gonna punch two holes here. Sometimes you've got to use your seam ripper and really kind of shove it through to get the holes. Um, and then you're just going to take a twine and, and put it through. So we have um, this one, which I, we used twine, but they're all, all the ones I didn't hang up are all a mess. Um, so here's a fun, cute one. I love the silk embellishments to put in between. So this one was a little bit tricky because I cut them all different funky sizes but I love to just add the embellishments and um, sometimes I'll do Savarsky crystals or um, you know the beads and bling and stuff at the bottom. Um, it just kind of, it, your imagination is the only thing that's gonna limit you. Um, and then real quick, we do have, and I'm sure this is not on the website because it's constantly changing, but we have little things of yarn that are great for putting in between the letters. Um, we've got silks, we've got all kinds of fun stuff. Um, we do do a Friday celebration at noon on our Facebook page where we hold up about 150 to 170 items for sale. And um, from the comfort of your home, you can bring a lot of Fabric Chicks merchandise into your house. 
Um, so that is, I think, all I've, I had more, but let's just call it a day and I'll bring the rest to you some other day. Are you there, Raylene? It was so much fun. Thank I love you. that, all that stuff. It's a great way to it's use fun. up a lot of small things. Yes, yes. And all the little embellishments and things that you save for some important purpose, but you never know what. Yep. Buttons, trims, all that stuff. Put it on these bands. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And hang around for us uh, with just a few more minutes for our question and answer. All right, guys. Um, that was our fourth vendor for today. And we hope everybody learned a lot. And uh, we hope everybody put in that secret word. I told you, I'm not going to tell you what it was again. So hopefully you uh, got that in there. But right now we're going to bring back all four of our vendors and do our question and answer real quick. So uh, our tech guy is getting everybody back up on the screen, Brady Bunch style here. While he's doing that, I just want to remind you that uh, as Chris mentioned at the beginning, May 20th, 21st, and 22nd, we will be live and in person in uh, Boise, Idaho, followed by June 17th, 18th, and 19th in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And then throughout the rest of the year, here's the cities we'll be in. So you can make sure you go to the Quilt Craft Sew uh, webpage so that you see the different dates and locations. But we're going to be in Denver, Sacramento, the Inland Empire, California, Pleasanton, Phoenix, Tucson, Wallop, and Portland. So there's lots of live shows coming up. We know a lot of you guys, though, are not in areas where we're going to be. And, you know, Beth and I have been talking offline, and it is our desire and hope that we're going to keep Wild Wednesday going as long as we can because we know so many of you are not close enough to get to some of those shows. So it looks like we've got everybody back. So if anybody has any questions, Go ahead and type those in the comments and then I'll field them. And it looks like the first question is for Adele. And it says, Adele, will the stencils work with the inks that Bobby showed? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think they're specially made for our uh, silk screen, but, you know, you can always try it. Yeah, and, and Bobby's um, saying, yes, she thinks so. Uh, yeah, you can use anything, uh, any of the inks with the uh, inks with any stencils or, or any dyes that you have. I also put them on uh, stamp, rubber stamps. Awesome. Um, and uh, Casey, who is with back with us from her car, God love her. She's like a trooper here. <laughs> um, we had a question earlier uh, for you, Casey, and one of the ladies wondered if you carry mastectomy bras. Um, we do not. I don't know how well you can hear me, but we... Um, um, at a couple of my shows, I bring knitted knockers with me that um, my mom made for an organization. And I've sold to several ladies where they will use the knitted knockers, which are kind of like a, a stone crocheted type um, apparatus that's stuffed. And many of the ladies that have had a single or double mastectomy have used those very successfully with a lot of our bras and our bras are, are good for people that potentially have had a single mastectomy because they're structured. And if you wanted to use it in a doctor, you can. So we have many different alternatives for people in that situation. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Adele, mm -hmm. Jen, uh, Jenny would like to know what is the difference between the try me kit and the starter kit as far as the costs? Uh, so the try me kits are around 20 bucks. The starter kit, is ninety nine dollars and you get two hundred and sixty five this month dollars worth of product. Awesome. And Kathy is asking, and I'm not real sure who this goes to. <laughs> it just says, "How do you make stencils?" So I'm not sure if uh, if she's just talking about a regular stencil like we use for quilting. Which, if that's the case, Kathy, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. There's a a little electric gun that will cut out of your template plastic, or you can also use a double exacto knife to make your different designs. Um, Beth, do you have any other ideas besides that? No, just wing it. Go freehand. Well, also, you can make your own silk screens as well. So if anybody's right. interested in that, have them contact me and I can tell them how they can do that. Awesome. Thanks, Bobby. And uh, let's see, I just lost it. Oh, Beth, <laughs> what are the costs for banner kits? Um, they are all on the website. We, we, you don't need a code. We did 20. We just already took 20% off all the kits. But they awesome. are, without the 25% off, um, they're all different prices, but like the one, uh, this one is twenty nine ninety five. 
So it would be that less the 20%. Awesome. And remember, she's uh, going to be giving a free kit away in that drawing today. And I believe she's going to give you a choice of some different ones, which is kind of a cool thing. And uh, we're just scrolling back real quick to make sure we didn't miss anybody's questions. Give me just a second here. You guys did such a thorough job today. It doesn't seem like we had very many. So that's a good thing as well. So yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like we're done for today. So I want to thank all of our vendors today and certainly want to thank all of our viewers. You guys have just been so terrific to stick with us. And uh, I don't know if you guys realize it or not, but those of you that have been with us from the beginning, this was week 21. It's hard to believe we've been doing this for 21 weeks now. <laughs> we might actually figure out how to do it at some point. You never know. We might surprise <laughs> but we do really appreciate you guys so, so very much. And we thank today's vendors. Like I said, they, they were so generous in donating these wonderful door prizes. And again, don't forget, I'm going to have the winners posted probably within the next hour. So just go back to the Quilt Craft Sew Facebook page, the same page you're watching live on, and I will post that along with my email so you know how to redeem. So I guess that's it for this week. I just want to thank everybody once again for joining us. We hope we see you next week. Uh, we will be uh, posting on Facebook, hopefully in the next day or so, who our four vendors are for next week. We're just finishing everything up. So thank you guys so much. Go out and make it one heck of a creative week. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye, everybody.